you was right there when Pac and Nas had that run in at Bryant Park, right? Yep, I was right there front and center. From your point of view, can you give me the backstory? Mm, my point of view. So the first thing that happened was at the awards, um, me, Gaddafi, Fatal, Napoleon, and who else was with us? Our homie from the Claire Bang was with us. We inside, right? It's probably about 30 of the homies outside. We inside the awards. Um, we walking in the back, you know, it's the stage, then it's all the seats, and then it's like a little area where everybody walk back. So we walking in the back, and um, Gaddafi walking in front of me, and I see him, he looking, and he stopped and kind of like turned and, and looked right there. And there's some guys, they like, like right there. And it's Nas's boys, and they kind of like grilling us and shit. So we like looking like, you know, like we grilling them back, you know? So it was almost like a, like a little exchange, like, like, you know, what it is. Like, like, come on, man, let's, you know. So that was the first thing that happened. So we walked, go to our seats and shit. And um, Pop, he presented his award. Once we knew, once he presented his award, we knew he was gonna be walking out soon. So we got up out of our seats. We hanging over on the side, waiting for him to come out. So we come out, we see him, and, you know, one of the homies probably told him like, you know, we just seen Nas, Boys, and she, you know, we recognize them from the videos. We all was huge Nas fans and shit. Like, we all love Nas, so we recognize the niggas we saw. They was his boys, about five of them and shit, you know what I mean? And um, somebody told to Pac, like, yeah, we, you know, we just seen Nas people and shit. They're trying to grill us or whatever, you know what I mean? So um, we start walking back out and um, we see two or three of them again. And um, one of them, I don't know, he says something. Pot kind of like, like we, like they were standing by the, the exit way to go out the thing. And uh, Pot kind of start barking on it. And I'm just remember security like the same, you know what I mean? So we all go out. So we just know like, ah, right, niggas see us. And you know, they from Queens. I'm sure they was feeling the way about Pot coming at Mob Deep, you know, as they should. They, you know, that, that was their brothers, you know what I'm saying? So, um, we leave out. We go to the park, the after party, right? It's like uh, probably a 10 minute walk. You know, you had about 30 Jersey guys outside. And um, we go outside and, um, you know, Pop like, yo, we're going to go to the after party of this right down the street. So, you know, everybody couldn't fit no van. So we all walked to the park. Pop giving out $100 bills the whole way. Might have gave out about $5,000 or whatever it was. I just know he kept saying, yo, give me some more money. And, you know, the streets was like, um, they was happy to see him. He was out there showing love, you know, just on our walk, you know. So we walk into this park. It's about 30 of us and shit. You know what I mean? And um, we get there and uh, we there for a hot second, maybe like 10, 15 minutes and um, drinking, just happy to be, you know, happy to be in this atmosphere and shit. You know, the, the Jersey homies is there. We introducing him to everybody and shit. Pac was feeling real, he was feeling real good to be back home, you know what I mean? So I remember he did an interview and he was, he was like, you know, um, you probably see it on YouTube. You see all the, you see all the behind him holding up Death Row E signs and all that. Yeah, he's like, you know, I bring a, you know, pocket was crazy. You, I bring a new government back, you know, all these suckers, Nas, nah, everybody, all, he's naming everybody in this shit. About, after he did that interview, about five minutes later, we see Nas come around the corner. You know what I mean? Everybody look. It's about him and maybe about the same guys we got into it with, and, and you know, in in the in the. Sh so you know they walk up, you know the whole the whole clan, surround them. You know, um, mind you, I'm I'm right there in the middle. I'm shoulder to shoulder with Pac right here. Pac Pac standing right here. Nas standing right here. Nas walked around the corner. Um, he wanted to see Pop. He wanted to talk to him. His body language was like, 
me and Pac need to chop it up. They met each other before. They had mutual respect for for each other, you know. So I know when Nas seen his boys at the awards, you know, um, they probably told him what happened. Yo, we seen Pac, niggas, da, 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 whatever. So he probably feel like I need to see Tupac. He pull up. Um, they start talking. You know what I mean? Mind you, they totally surrounded at this point. You know. Um, they was outnumbered. Nothing tough about that. It was just pop first time back in New York. We was deep, you know, um, and that's just what it was. Now, this is a corporate event. A lot of rich white people and actors and, you know, it was no reason for Nas to be there um, deep at all. You know, so he had his he had his couple of guys and as he should, you know, yeah, it's cool squad. And, sh and um, so. They chopping it up, you know, I'm right there. You know, mind you, Nas was one of my favorites. This was like a movie to me. I see that he right in front of me. You know, I knew Illmatic, I knew the words to a fucking song. You know what I mean? The had on a red leather outfit. He had on some glasses with some red lenses. See, right here in front of me, me and Pac shoulder to shoulder. Nas right here in my face. My first time, you know, I could, in, in, in this environment. I wanted to tell a nigga how much... You know, we all love him, but you know, nah, this is wartime, you know, Pac chopping it up with him. So, um, you know, it was a little pushing going on. His boy, yo, Pac, tell your boy to back up. And they ain't backing up nothing. Like this, it was, it was, it was a little tense exchange, but them niggas, them niggas handle it like men. And they, and they, and they talk and Pac told him what the fuck was going on. He told him he had him all. Um, he dissed him on against all odds. He told him he was going to take it off. He like, yo, Nick, we got to work. Niggas, niggas, niggas should never be going at each other like that. You know what I'm saying? And, um, it was a, it was a simple exchange and Nas walked away. Right. It was, it was a little hectic, you know, for a minute, a little pushing sugar right there. You know, Snoop was way over there on the other side of the field. I saw him specifically. He was way over there. You know what I mean? Um, I was right there, shoulder to shoulder with Pac, with one of my favorite rappers, Nas, right in front of my face, right? Um, then they left, right? We was all happy that this happened. You know what I mean? Pac loved Nas. I know they had nothing but respect for each other. I know all our Jersey niggas love that nigga. How do I know? Cause nigga, that's that's all we played when that nigga came out from, you know, his first verse you ever heard. You know what I mean? Live at the barbecue, we was all rocking with the nigga. Um, what I don't like is over the years, man. Um, how that exchange, all these different stories. The the. The, 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 the truth is, you know, Nas walked up. It was about seven of them. It was about 30, 40 of us. He didn't, he didn't skip a beat, man. He didn't like, he didn't get, you know, he didn't tuck his head. He walked up. He wanted to talk to Pac. It was, the truth was, it was, it was as gangster as it get. He walked up and they had a conversation. Pac all sweating, telling the Yo, da, 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 da. you know, Nas was cool, like, yeah, yeah, da, 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 da. and, um, you know, the, the, the corny shit, though, is like afterwards, all the amazing, wild stories. <laughs> right, right. 20 years later, everybody got a wild story what happened that night. You know, his brother Jungle, I'm about to shoot Tupac. He wouldn't have made it out the fucking park. I niggas had heat. It was surrounded. It was nothing they could do. You know, anybody could be outnumbered. That's it's nothing. It's nothing special about that. You know, a couple of niggas, you know, could go against a bunch of niggas for sure, right? But it was no win in this situation. You know, it wasn't no, you know, sort of amazing wild stories that I don't heard over these years. I'm gonna start with Snoop Dogg. Nothing but love for Snoop Dogg. He turned. He t he told a wild version. You know, I think like with Snoop, like like when I Snoop uh, uh, Kendrick, the joint he just dropped, he was saying Snoop. I hope it was the edibles. I hope it was the edibles when when he when he said this one because he had a wild version of the story. Like um, Nas had Pac surrounded and all that. But I'm a, to to Snoop defense, right? Um, Snoop didn't he didn't he didn't come with Pac 
to this to to this park. Snoop got there in his vehicle, his security, however he did. So I think all the niggas that that we had with us, they was outside the venue. All our Jersey niggas, they, the niggas ain't come inside the motherfucking awards. They was outside waiting for us to come out. So um, in my mind, I'm thinking maybe Snoop he don't realize all these niggas is actually with Tupac. They're not with Nas. So I'm a to his defense, I'ma say that. You know what I mean? But he told a wild version of the story. I don't it was a long time ago when I saw what he said, but it was something like, yo, Nas, he had Pac surrounded and he had it was almost like Snoop version was like, you know, Pac Nas could have snapped his finger and it was over for Pac. And I'm like, I, you know, I I don't know, you know, in, in his mind, you know, he, he smoked a lot of weed. It was almost 30 fucking years ago, but um, Snoop's version for sure was by far the most off version. It was it was no truth at all to his version of the story. Mind you, I saw Snoop when all this was going on. He was way over there. Yeah, you think he was from a distance. Yeah. I mean, fucking way over there. You know what I mean? So for him, his version was just, I don't know so why he- So he couldn't even hear what they was talking about. He was nowhere near it. I like literally. I think he was doing an interview with the cameras in his face. I was just he, this is Snoop Dogg. You can't you can't miss Snoop Dogg in the crowd. He's tall as shit, you know what I mean. So I don't know what made Snoop come up with that version, man. But just over the years, it's it's you know fatal. He 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 used to lash out about that. You know like a time you know Nas one of them would do an interview. He was like real disappointed because we all love Nas and looked up to Nas and. You know, um, um, to see like over the years how this story done just spiraled out of control with all these wild stories. Nothing fucking happened. Nobody threw a punch. It wasn't nothing. Niggas had a fucking meeting. Them niggas was surrounded. You know, it wasn't no winning for them niggas that day. It was forty of us. It was some seven of them niggas, and he walked up like a fucking G. He didn't stutter. He didn't. His, his step wasn't off. That's the that's the, the realest version of the story. That's the that's the most gangster version of the story. He was outnumbered. He ain't turn around or nigga old death row. Nigga Shug right there. Nigga, there wasn't nobody else gonna walk up like that. Wasn't none of them other niggas out there gonna walk up like that. Trust me. That's the most gangster version of the story. The fucking truth. You know what I mean? Nigga walked up. It was outnumbered by two, three. It was it was about damn near forty of us, man. And they surrounded them niggas for real. He didn't stutter. He didn't he didn't wave at all. He wanted to talk to Tupac. They had a mutual respect. So like, I just don't understand why it's all this crazy versions where the truth is the most gangster version, man. You know, his nigga telling stories. They had Pac yoked up and all this fucking silly shit. You know, but I think the most disappointing part for me. Get nuts, right? The internet, right? Let me say something real quick. Okay, let me say something. I think the wildest part for me is because I got nothing but love and respect for Nasty Nas, man, and what he brought to the game and how he carry himself. And, um, you know, he's one of our legends and our icons. And after Tupac died, right? And all these different stories and shit, telling their own versions, man, what the, the, the truth is the most gangster version, right? But I think when he started doing these, uh, what's the name of them albums he was doing? The King's Diseases, maybe? Mm-hmm, yeah. King's Disease trilogy he was doing this. It was like, you know, I think when Snoop's interview set the platform for niggas to like try to run with it. So I, that was the most disappointing part for me. Um, he started dropping these King's Disease albums and it seemed like every album he was throwing little lines in there about Tupac because he knew for sure the internet would run wild with them, right? Like one one um line he was saying he uh he ran into Pac somewhere, one of them colleges and Pac asked him what he was drinking and basically he gave Pac he the Hennessy. For Pac drinking Hennessy. Yeah. It's like, you know, when all this shit pop up, we be ignoring it, but I be getting calls and from you know, the, the family and everybody be like, Pac been and drinking Hennessy, you know, but it's it's a it's a it's a he he. It's like you 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 you, you dropping these albums, you know, 
They don't get played on the radio no more or things like that. He don't need none of that shit. He's rich. He's a fucking legend. But it's like the little internet buzz, right? Where I'm going to throw a little Tupac line because he see this Death Row East story. You know, this not Death You know, that whole MTV story, you know, um, with him running into Pac, how I just grew legs and all these different versions of the motherfucking story, you know? So, you know, like throwing out the Pac line, right, um, about teaching him how to, he, he gave him his first sip of Hennessy. He'll do that on one album. The next album, it will be like, I'm going to do the Death Row E song. You know, then the next album, it will be like, um, what he say? Something about he, 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 he stole Pac's thug life tat because he got the Godson tat, but then he's saying um, Pac stole the Machiavelli, um, the euthanasia chain from his QB chain. Now, I'm a, I'm a Nas fan, right? I remember in 97, you know, I think he did like a, a QB album. And I think that that chain was, my, I might have been on the cover, if I'm not mistaken. I was a fan of all of them niggas. Mob Deep, Capone and Noriega, all them niggas is dope artists. You know what I mean? Dope as shit, right? But that's one thing I remember that night, standing right next shoulder to shoulder with Pop. I remember Nas staring at this nigga's chain. I'm like right here. This is one of my favorite fucking rappers. He's right in my face, right here, with his with his glasses on, with the red lenses. I remember him staring at Pac chain the whole time. So I wonder if you could find. So if he say Pac stole that chain, I wonder if you could find a picture of him with that chain before Pac died. Pro probably not. Probably not. Be honest with you, because I was a fan. I used to pay attention to all that, sh all the videos, the magazines. I'm, I'm really hip hop in the flesh, you know. So everybody pay attention to what's going on, you know. So he threw that line out there. He, he pop bit his chain. You probably can't find a fucking picture of Nas with that chain when Pac was alive. Do some research after this interview and see if you can find a picture of Nas with that chain on. Yeah, I Pac can't recall. You I probably... do know he took Pac idea when it came to the Thug Life tattoo. He got God's son. Yeah, he said that. He said that in the song. And then he said, yeah, well, Pac bit my QB chain. And that's the thing. I We 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 was we was huge fans of yours. And I remember that night, listen to me. I was right next. Tupac's shoulder was right here, nigga. And that's the one thing that I remember from I was 18 years old in 1996. I'm 46 years old, nigga. You know what I mean? I remember that night vividly. My favorite rapper, Nasty Nas and Tupac, right here in my face. Nas got on his dope-ass red leather outfit, and he had on some shades, some probably some expensive sh with with red lenses. And I just remember, you know, he was short, and he was staring at Tupac, fancy ass. Machiavelli euthanasia chain, you know? So I'm like, you throwing these lines out, it's, it's, it's disappointing, because you, you, you're one of our legends and one of our heroes, and Tupac had nothing but love and respect for you, and that night he treated you as such. And, you know, besides all the little pushing niggas was doing, you know, we all loved you too, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So, that's the most disappointing shit for me, is after all these years, there's all these the wild stories, his brother, you know, talking all this. He was about to shoot Tupac. Shit. Man, it would have been a whole massacre in that park. Nobody would have made it out that month. Or God himself. Niggas were surrounded. Niggas, it was four, five of our niggas had guns, security, sugar, everybody there. Man, you know? So I think that's the most disappointing part because it's like doing all this stuff on the internet. We're supposed to have more integrity than that, man. You know? Yeah, you're right. I mean, while you was talking, I was doing some research and yeah, Tupac, he was the first person with that chain. There's no possible way he could have copied Nas. And the first time you see Nas with it is the album cover QB Finest. And that came out in 1999. I mean, by then, Tupac was dead. So yeah, they definitely lying, man.